Chapter 23 Yanez at the Villa The mission was without a doubt one of the riskiest and most audacious that intrepid Portuguese had ever undertaken. Just one wrong word, one suspicion, and his lordship would not have hesitated to hang him from the tallest tree. Nevertheless, the pirate calmly and courageously prepared to play his dangerous card, having faith in his cool-headedness and that lucky star of his that never seemed to tire of protecting him. Sitting proudly in the saddle, he curled his moustache, tilted his hat, and spurred his horse into a full gallop. Riding furiously, within two hours he arrived at the wall surrounding Lord James's estate. "'Who goes there?' asked a soldier, emerging from behind one of the trees near the gate. "'Lower your rifle, young man. I'm not a tiger, nor am I a babirusa," said the Portuguese, reining in his horse. "'By Jupiter! Did the uniform escape you? Need another look at these stripes, private?' "'Pardon me, sir, but my orders are to question every one that enters. Who sent you, and what is the nature of your business?' "'Very well. I came here on behalf of Baron William Rosenthal, and I am on my way to see his lordship. Pass.' The soldier opened the gate, called to a few colleagues to inform them of the new arrival, then stepped to one side. "'So many precautions,' mumbled the Portuguese as he rode his horse forward. "'They're more afraid of us than I thought.' He came to a halt before a wall and jumped to the ground between six soldiers. They immediately surrounded him, rifles at the ready. "'Where's his lordship?' he asked. "'In his study,' replied the sergeant in command. "'Take me to him. It's urgent.' You've come from Victoria? Precisely. How did you get past the pirates of Montpresen? I didn't see any, Sergeant. Those thieves have more important things to do than buzz about here. Now take me to his lordship. Come. The Portuguese followed the Sergeant, bracing himself for the next phase of his plan. Wait here, said the Sergeant, after having led him to the drawing room. Having been left alone, Yanez carefully studied the room to see if he could launch a surprise attack, but he quickly realized any such attempt would be futile. The windows were too high off the ground and the walls and doors were much too solid. It doesn't matter, he murmured. We'll get them in the forest. The sergeant re-entered the room. His lordship will see you now, he said, directing Yanez to an open door. The Portuguese shivered and turned slightly pale. Caution above all, Yanez, my boy, he murmured. He entered, saluted, and found himself in a beautiful study furnished with great elegance. In a corner, sitting behind a desk, was his lordship dressed in white, his face dark and scowling. He looked up at Yanez in silence, fixing his eyes upon him as if to probe his thoughts, then said dryly, So, you've come from Victoria? Yes, my lord, Yanez replied firmly. On the Baron's behalf? Yes, sir. Did he give you a letter for me? No, sir. A message? Yes, my lord. Speak, then. He sent me to tell you that the Tiger of Malaysia bay south of here. His lordship jumped to his feet. The Tiger surrounded? he exclaimed. Yes, it appears it's finally over for that devil. There's no way he can escape. Are you sure? Very sure, my lord. Who are you? One of the Baron's relatives, sir, Yanez daringly replied. How long have you been in Labuan? Fifteen days, sir. Then you know that my niece is my cousin William's fiancée, sir, smiled Yanez. I am very pleased to meet you, said his lordship, shaking the soldier's hand. Tell me, when was Sandokan attacked? This morning at dawn, while crossing the forest at the head of a large band of pirates. That man is a demon. Last night he was here. Is it possible he travelled over so much terrain in only seven or eight hours? He had some horses with him. Oh, that explains it. Where's my good friend William, at the head of our troops? Oh, of course. Where else would he be? And you were with him? Yes, my lord. How far are the pirates? Ten miles or so, sir. He didn't give you any other instructions? He told me to ask you to leave the villa and take your niece to Victoria without delay. Why? My lord, you know the kind of man the Tiger of Malaysia is. He has eighty men with him. Eighty tigers. There's still a chance he could defeat our troops across the forest and attack the villa. Stunned by that bit of reasoning, his lordship studied Yanez in silence, then muttered, A likely possibility. We'd be safer in the fort. 
dear William is right. Best take advantage of this opportunity and set off for Victoria. Ah, my dear niece, I'll destroy the passion you have for that scoundrel. You will obey me, and you will marry the man I've selected for you, even if I have to break you like a reed. Yanez's hand ran instinctively to the hilt of his sword. But he held himself back, well aware the old man's death would not have served any purpose, given the considerable number of soldiers guarding the villa. My lord, he said instead, would you permit me to visit my future cousin? You have something to tell her on William's behalf? Yes, my lord. You won't get a warm reception. It doesn't matter, my lord, replied Yanez with a smile. I'll give her William's message, then return here. The old captain pressed a button. A servant immediately entered. Take this man to see my lady, said his lordship. Thank you, replied Yanez. Try to convert her, then come join me. We'll have lunch together. Yanez bowed and followed the servant to a parlour. The walls were papered in a light blue silk brocade. Numerous plants gave the room the appearance of a hot house and filled the air with a delightful fragrance. The Portuguese waited for the servant to leave, then slowly made his way through the greenery. It was not long before he beheld a figure dressed in white. Despite being prepared for any shock, he could not contain a cry of admiration. Mariana was lying on a silk ottoman. Her beautiful hair fell to her shoulders in a shower of gold. Her head resting against her hand, she appeared melancholy as she nervously plucked the flowers by her side. She was pale, gloomy, and her blue eyes, ordinarily so calm, hinted at her anger. Seeing Yana's approach, she shook herself, put her hand to her forehead, as if awaking from a dream, and fixed an inquiring gaze upon him. "'Who are you?' she asked, her voice trembling slightly. "'Who gave you permission to enter this room?' "'His lordship, my lady,' replied Yanez, his eyes fixed upon that woman he found to be even more beautiful than Sandra Kenner described. "'What do you want?' First a question, my lady,' said Yanez, looking around to ensure they were alone. "'Ask away.' Do you think anyone can hear us? She frowned, gazed at him as if to read his thoughts, then guessing the reason behind that question, replied, We are alone. Well, milady, I've come from far away. From? Montpressem. Mariana jumped to her feet, her pallor disappearing as if by magic. From Montpressem, she exclaimed, blushing. You, a white man, an Englishman. You're mistaken, lady Mariana. I'm not English. My name is Yanez. Yanez, the friend, Sandokan's brother. What audacity to enter this villa, sir? Tell me, where is Sandokan? What's he doing? Is he safe? Has he been injured? Tell me about him. Don't make me suffer. Lower your voice, my lady. The walls may have ears. Tell me about him, my brave friend. Tell me about Sandokan. Sandokan is hiding somewhere along the path to Victoria, ready to rescue you. Ah, dear lord. How I thank you for having protected him, exclaimed the young lady, her eyes welling with tears. Listen, my lady, tell me everything, my brave friend. I came here to convince his lordship to leave the villa and take refuge in Victoria. Victoria? But once there, how will you kidnap me? Sanrakan won't wait that long, my lady, said Yanez with a smile. He's planning an ambush with his men. He'll attack the convoy once you've left the villa. What about my uncle? We'll spare him, I assure you. And you'll kidnap me? Yes, my lady. And where will Sandokan take me? To his island. Mariana lowered her head and remained silent. My lady, said Yanez, his tone becoming serious, do not be afraid. Sandokan knows how to please the woman he loves. He was a vicious man, cruel even, but love has changed him. I swear you'll never regret becoming the tiger of Malaysia's wife. I believe you replied Mariana, though he's slain hundreds in his quest for vengeance and bathed these waters in blood, what does the past matter when it all is said? He loves me. He'll do anything I ask of him, and he'll become a love of the man. I'll leave my island. He'll leave his Montpressem, and we'll travel far from these waters. So far we'll never hear speak of them again. In a corner of the world, forgotten by all, we'll live happily and no one will ever suspect that the Pearl of Labuan's husband is the former tiger of Malaysia, the man that made kingdoms tremble and spilled so much blood. Yes, I'll be his bride, and I will love him forever. 
Ah, my lady, exclaimed Yanez, falling to his knees. Tell me what I can do to free you and take you to Sandokan, my best friend, and I love like a brother. You've done too much just by coming here. I'll be grateful to you for as long as I live. We must convince his lordship to go to Victoria, so Sandokan can play his plan into action. My uncle has become extremely suspicious. If I were to suggest it, he'd fear some kind of trick and would not set foot outside the garden walls. You're right, my adorable lady, but judging from my last conversation with him, I believe he has made his mind up to head for Victoria. If he is still in doubt, I'll try to persuade him. Take care, sir. He's a suspicious man and may smell a trap. You may not look like a pirate, that's true, but he may know that Santa Cana is a European friend. I'll be careful. Is his lordship waiting for you? Yes, my lady. He invited me to lunch. You should go, then, so he doesn't become suspicious. Will you be joining us? Yes, we'll see each other later. Goodbye, my lady, said Yanis, kissing her hand gallantly. Go, my noble friend. I'll never forget this. The Portuguese left in a state of near intoxication, dazzled by the sigh of that divine young woman. By Jupiter, he exclaimed, heading towards his lordship's study. I've never seen such a beautiful woman. I think I'm beginning to envy that rascal Sandokan. His lordship was waiting for him, pacing back and forth, his arms crossed tightly, a heavy frown upon his brow. Well, young man, what kind of reception did my niece give you? It appears she doesn't like to hear talk of my cousin William, replied Yanez. I'm I was almost chased away. His lordship shook his head as the lines on his forehead grew deeper. It's always like this. Always, he murmured angrily. He fell silent and resumed his pacing, eyes glaring, fingers twitching nervously. Yanez did not move, his eyes fixed on the old man. What do you think I should do? he asked, coming to a sudden halt before the Portuguese. As we discussed, my lord, it would be best to go to Victoria. You're right. Do you think my niece could love William one day? he asked. I hope so, my lord. But not while the tiger of Malaysia is still alive, replied Yanez. His tigers... You think we'll be able to kill him? His tigers are surrounded by troops, and William is in command. Yes, you're right. He'll either kill Sanokan or be killed by him. I know that young man well. He's as brave as they come. He fell silent once again, went to the window and fixed his eyes upon the setting sun. After a few minutes, he re-entered the room and said, so, you recommend we set off? Yes, my lord, replied Yanis. Take advantage of this opportunity to leave your villa and find refuge in Victoria. And if Sandokan has prepared a trap of some kind, I have been told there's a European with him, named Yanis, a cunning man, equally as dangerous as the Tiger of Malaysia. Thanks for the compliment, thought Yanis, making a supreme effort to keep from laughing. Then looking at his lordship, he said, You have enough guards to ward off any attack. I did, but no longer. I had to dispatch several men to the governor of Victoria. He needed them urgently. You know the garrison isn't very large. That's true, my lord. The old captain began to pace nervously. He appeared perplexed, perhaps troubled by grave thoughts. After a few minutes of reflection, he stopped suddenly, approached Yanez, and asked, You said you didn't see anyone on the way here. Not a soul, my lord. You didn't see anything suspicious? No, my lord. Then we c could set off immediately? I think so. Yet I still have my doubts. Doubts, my lord? Not all the pirates may have left. My lord, do not be afraid of those wretches. Would you like me to scout the area? I'd be grateful. Shall I assign some men to accompany you? No, my lord. I prefer to go alone. One man can enter the jungle without attracting the attention of the enemy, whereas several men would find it hard to sneak past a vigilant lookout. You're right, young man. When are you going to leave? Right away. I can cover a lot of ground in a few hours. The sun is almost set. All the better, my lord. You are not afraid? When I'm armed, I fear no one. Fine stock, these Rosenthal's, murmured his lordship. Go, my friend. I'll expect you for dinner. Ah, my lord, you dine with a soldier? Are you not a gentleman? Besides, it may not be long before we're related. Thank you, my lord, said Yanez. He drew his sword, saluted, seized it, then calmly descended the stairs and entered the garden. Now, to find Sandokan, he murmured. 
when he was a good distance from the villa. Hell, I'll have to make his lordship happy. He would perform his reconnaissance, and Lord James would be happy to learn he had not found a single pirate. By Jupiter, what a magnificent trick! Who could have thought it would have worked so superbly? It may not have gone quite as smoothly as Yannis would have liked, but that scoundrel of a brother of his would marry that golden-haired young woman. By heavens, he certainly couldn't fault Sandokan's taste. He had never seen anyone as gracious and beautiful. But then, he feared for the future of his beloved Montpresset. But there was no use worrying about it now. If fate no longer wanted them to scour these seas, they would go and live out the remainder of their years in some city in the Orient. Canton or Macau, perhaps. When the time came, they would bid goodbye to these lands forever. While pondering the future, the good Portuguese had crossed a large track of the pond and came to a halt before one of the gates. A soldier was standing guard in front of it. Open, my friend, said Yanis. Are you leaving us, sergeant? No, just off to scout the area. Looking for pirates? There aren't many in these parts any more. Would you like me to accompany you, sergeant? That won't be necessary. I'll be back in a few hours. He passed through the gate and headed up the path to Victoria. As long as he remained within the guard's sight, he advanced slowly. But once the vegetation concealed his movements, he quickened his pace and barreled through the forest. He had gone a few hundred meters when a man leapt out of the bush and blocked his path. A rifle was immediately trained at his chest, and a menacing voice thundered, "'Surrender or die!' "'You don't recognize me?' said Yanis, taking off his hat. "'Your vision isn't as good as it once was, my dear Paranoa. "'Signor Yanis, sir!' exclaimed the Malay. "'In the flesh, my friend. "'What are you doing here so close to his lordship's villa?' "'Keeping an eye on the wall. "'Where's Sandokan? "'A mile from here. "'Do you have good news, sir? "'It couldn't be better. "'What are your orders? "'Run and tell Sandokan I'm waiting for him here. "'Have him order Ikout to prepare the Prahu. "'Are we leaving? "'Perhaps as soon as tonight. "'I'll run right away. "'Wait, have the other Prahus arrived?' No, sir. The men are fe starting to fear they've sunk. Great God in heaven! We have such bad luck with our expeditions. Fortunately, we have enough men to defeat his lordship's guard. Go, Paranoa, and be quick. I'll be back in a flash. The pirate shot off like an arrow. Yanez calmly lit a cigarette and lay down beneath the superb oreca tree. Less than twenty minutes later he spotted Sanakan racing up the path at full speed. He was accompanied by Paranoa, and four pirates armed to the teeth. "'Yanez, my friend!' exclaimed Sandokan, running toward him. "'How I feared for you! What happened? Did you see her? Tell me about her, brother. Tell me. I'm burning with curiosity.' "'You run like the wind,' said the Portuguese, laughing. "'I am happy to report all went well. I played my part beautifully. They think I'm an Englishman. I introduced myself as one of the Baron's relatives. What a reception, my friend!' No one doubted me for a moment. Not even his lordship. Ho! Oh, him least of all. He's waiting to have dinner with me. And Mariana? I talked to her and found her charming and beautiful. Then when I saw her cry— You saw her cry? yelled Sandokan's son. Who made her shed those tears? Who made those beautiful eyes cry? Tell me, I'll rip out the scoundrel's heart. You've gone mad, haven't you? Her tears were for you. Ah, oh, my beloved— exclaimed the pirate. Tell me everything, Yanis, I beg you. The Portuguese did not wait to be asked a second time, and quickly related his conversations with his lordship and the young woman. The old man seems bent on leaving now, he continued. So you can be certain you won't be returning to Montpressem alone. We still need to be cautious, though, little brother. There are still quite a few soldiers in the garden. It won't be easy to defeat his escort. I don't trust that old man much. He'd slay his niece before he'd allow you to kidnap her. Will you see her tonight? Of course. Ah, if only I could enter the villa as well. You'll see her soon enough. When will his lordship start his journey? I don't know yet, but I think he'll probably make his decision this evening. Do you think there's a chance they'll leave tonight? It's possible. How could I know for certain? Send one of our men to the Chinese gazebo or to the hot house to await my orders. "'Aren't they guards stationed about the park?' "'No, they're only at the gates,' replied Yanez. "'What if I were to hide in the hothouse?' "'No, Sandokan. You've got to keep watch over the path. "'His lordship could hasten his departure, and you'll be needed here to lead the attack. 
You know you're worth ten men. I'll send Paranoa. He's capable, cautious, and he'll get into the hothouse without being spotted. As soon as the sun sets, he'll hop over the wall and await your orders. Yanez fell silent for a moment, then said, What if his lordship changes his mind and remains in the villa? Hell, that would complicate things. What if, once it's dark, you let us through the gate and sneak into the villa? It seems like a viable alternative to me. An unrealistic one, Sando can. There are too many guards. Once barricaded inside the villa, they could put up a strong resistance. Besides, if his lordship found himself in dire straits, his anger could quite easily get the best of him, and in the heat of the moment, he could very well empty his two pistols into the young woman. Don't underestimate that man, Sando can. You're right, sighed the tiger. Lord James could kill her. You'll wait on the path, then? Yes, Yanez. If, however, he doesn't decide to leave right away, I'll make a desperate attempt. We can't stay here forever. We have to take Mariana away before the authorities in Victoria realize we've landed here and left Montpresem almost defenseless. I fear for my island. If we lose our home, what will become of us? I'll try to persuade his lordship to hasten his departure. In the meantime, ready the Prahu and assemble the entire crew. We'll have to overpower his escort quickly, before his lordship can do anything rash. How many soldiers are there at the villa? About ten or so, and as many natives. Victory is assured, then. Yanez stood up. Are you going back now? asked Sandokan. You shouldn't keep a man waiting for dinner, especially when he's a captain and I'm only a sergeant, replied Yanez with a smile. How I envy you, Yanez. Rest assured, little brother, you'll see her tomorrow. I hope so, sighed the tiger. Goodbye, my friend. Go and convince him. They shook hands and parted. Then, as Sandokan and his men set off to ready their trap, Yanez lit a cigarette and headed towards the park, walking calmly, as if he were returning from a stroll rather than a reconnaissance mission. He walked past the sentry and began to stroll around the garden. It was still too early to meet with his lordship. At the end of the pathway he bumped into Lady Mariana, who appeared to be looking for him. "'Ah, my lady, what luck!' exclaimed the Portuguese. "'I was looking for you,' replied the young woman, offering him her hand. "'Do you have something important to tell me?' "'Yes, we're leaving for Victoria in five hours.' "'Did his lordship say that?' "'Yes.' "'Sandokan is ready, my lady. "'The pirates have been notified of our plans and have prepared an ambush.' "'Good Lord!' she murmured. "'I can't believe it's going to happen.' "'My lady, we have to be tough and determined.' My uncle. He'll curse me. He'll hate me. But Sanokan will make you happy, the happiest of all women. Two tears ran slowly down the young woman's cheeks. Tears, said Yanez. Don't cry, Lady Mariana. I'm afraid, Yanez. Of Sanokan? No, of the future. It will be bright. Sanokan will do anything you wish. He is prepared to set fire to his prahus, disband his men, forget his vendettas, bid goodbye to his island, and relinquish his power. A word from you would be enough to change his life. He loves me that much? Madly, milady. But who is this man? Why so much blood? Why so many vendettas? Where did he come from? It's a long story, milady, said Yanez, offering his arm as he led her into the shade. The majority of people think Sandokan is no more than a vulgar pirate, born somewhere in the jungles of Borneo, a man thirsty for blood and riches. But they couldn't be more wrong. He's of royal descent. He's not a pirate, but an avenger. He was twenty years old when he ascended the throne of Muladur, a kingdom near the southern coasts of Borneo. As strong as a lion, as cunning as a tiger, as fearless and valiant as a hero of old, in a very short time he conquered the lands about him and extended his frontiers to the river Boti and the borders of the kingdom of Varuni. Those victories would prove fatal, though. The Dutch and the British, jealous of the new power that appeared on the verge of subjugating the entire island, allied themselves with the Sultan of Varuni to destroy that brave warrior. Bribes of gold and arms would eventually bring down that new empire. Traitors stirred up the various factions of natives and hired assassins to kill Sandokan's mother, brothers, and sisters. Powerful legions invaded his kingdom, corrupting his captains and their troops, killing, pillaging, committing unspeakable atrocities. Sandokan held his ground, fending off his enemies with the fury of desperation. 
but despite his efforts that valiant struggle would soon come to an end. The betrayals had reached his very palace. His family fell beneath the steel of paid assassins, and he, on the night of that carnage and slaughter, barely managed to escape with a small band of loyal men. For years he hid throughout the southern coasts of Borneo, hunted like a wild beast, living in an unspeakable misery, hoping to avenge his family's murder and recapture his lost throne. Then, one night, giving up on everything and everyone, he boarded a prahu and declared war on the Sultan of Varuni and all members of the white race. Once established on Montpresem, he gathered some men and began to pirate the sea. He was strong, brave, clever, and thirsty for revenge. He devastated the Sultan's court, attacked Dutch and British ships. He was relentless, merciless. He soon became the terror of the seas, the infamous Tiger of Malaysia. You know the rest. He's avenging his family? exclaimed Mariana, no longer weeping. Yes, my lady, an avenger who often mourns the loss of his mother, brothers and sisters, fallen beneath the blades of assassins, an avenger who respected the weak, who never harmed women or children, and who pillages his enemies, not out of greed, but to one day raise an army and retake his lost kingdom. What a balm your words are, Yanis, said the young woman. Then you've decided to be with the Tiger of Malaysia? Yes, I'm his. I love him. Life would be impossible without him. Let's go back to the villa, young lady. God will look after us. Yanis led the young lady to the villa, and they walked up to the dining room. His lordship was already there, pacing back and forth, as gloomy as before, his eyes fixed on the floor. "'Ah, you're back. I was beginning to fear something bad had happened to you. I wanted to ensure that we were in no danger whatsoever, my lord,' replied Yanez. "'Did you see one of those dogs from Montpresem? "'Not one, my lord. We may go to Victoria whenever you wish.' His lordship remained silent for a few minutes, then turned towards Mariana, who was standing near a window. "'Have you heard that we're going to Victoria?' he asked. "'Yes,' she replied dryly. "'Will you be joining us?' "'You know full well I cannot do otherwise. "'I thought I'd have to drag you out there by force.' "'Sir!' The Portuguese noticed the young woman's eyes flash menacingly, but remained silent despite an irresistible urge to run the old man through. "'Well!' Ex his lordship exclaimed sarcastically. I never thought you'd give in so easily. By any chance, have you stopped loving that knife-wielding hero of yours? My congratulations, young lady. That's enough, exclaimed the young woman in a tone that made even his lordship te tremble. They remained silent for a few minutes, eyeing one another like animals before a fight. You'll yield. You'll yield or I'll break you, said his lordship furiously. I kill you before I let you become the wife of that dog, Sandokan. Do it, she said menacingly, stepping towards him. You wish to make a scene? A waste of time, my dear. You know I'm inflexible on this issue. You'd be better served preparing for our departure. The young lady stopped. She exchanged a quick look with Yanez, then left the room, violently slamming the door behind her. You saw her, said his lordship, turning towards Yanez. She thinks she can defy me, but she's wrong. By God, I'll break her. Instead of replying, Yanez wiped a couple of drops of cold sweat from his brow and crossed his arms so as not to surrender to the temptation of drawing his sword. He would have given anything to do away with that terrible old man, knowing he would not have hesitated to carry out his threat. His lordship paced around the room for a few minutes, then motioned for Yanez to sit. Dinner was eaten in silence. Lord James barely touched his plate. The Portuguese, however, did great justice to that large variety of food, eating as if it were his last meal. They had just finished when a corporal entered. "'You summon me, sir?' he asked. "'Tell the soldiers to prepare to leave.' "'What time, sir?' "'Midnight, and have everyone load fresh bullets into their rifles.' "'Yes, sir.' "'Are we all leaving, my lord?' asked Yanez. "'I'll leave four men behind.' Do you think our escort is large enough? We'll take twelve soldiers and ten natives. With such strength we have nothing to fear. You don't know the pirates of Montpresem, young man. If we meet them, victory could go either way. Will you permit me to go to the garden, my lord? What for? To supervise the preparations. By all means, young man. 
The Portuguese left the room and rapidly descended the stairs, murmuring, I hope I get there in time to warn Paranoa. Sanakan will prepare a nice ambush for them. He walked past the soldiers without stopping, and getting his bearings as best as he could, headed down the path to the hothouse. Five minutes later he found himself in the middle of the grove of banana trees where he had captured the British soldier the previous night. He looked about to ensure he had not been followed, then approached the hothouse and silently pushed open the door. A dark shadow immediately trained a gun at his chest. "'It's me, Paranoa,' he said. "'Ah, Senor Yanez! "'You must leave immediately. "'Tell San Ocan we're going to set off in a few hours. "'We'll be ready. "'How large is the escort?' "'About twenty men. "'I'll leave right away. "'Good-bye, Senor Yanez. "'The Malai left the hot house and headed down a path, "'keeping to the shadows. "'When Yanez returned to the villa, "'his lordship was coming down the stairs. "'He had strapped on his sword and slung a rifle over his shoulder.' Twenty-two men, twelve British soldiers and ten natives were standing at attention, each man armed to the teeth. A group of horses were pawing the ground by the garden gate, anxious to set off. "'Where is my niece?' asked the old man. "'There she is,' replied the sergeant of the guard. Lady Mariana was just walking down the stairs. She was dressed in her riding clothes, a jacket and long skirt of azure velvet, and the feather hat tilted to one side. She could barely hide her nervousness, and the Portuguese, who was watching her closely, spotted two tears forming on her lashes. She was no longer the energetic young woman of a few hours earlier, the woman that had spoken with such fire and pride. The thought of being kidnapped, of forever leaving her uncle, her only relative, who did not love her, that was true, but who had looked after her during her youth of forever leaving those familiar places for an unknown future in the arms of a man that bore the name Tiger of Malaysia, seemed to have finally overwhelmed her. When she mounted her horse, her last strength gave way and the tears began to fall in abundance. Yanez rode his horse towards her and said, Be strong, milady. The future will be bright for the Pearl of Labuan. At his lordship's command, the escort began its march, leaving the garden and heading down the path, where unknown to them, the tigers were lying in wait. Six soldiers led the way, rifles in hand, scanning their surroundings, ready to spring into action at the first sign of an ambush. His lordship rode behind them, followed by Yanez, the young woman, and another four soldiers. The rest of the escort brought up the rear, weapons slung over their saddles. Despite Yanez's scouting report, everyone was apprehensive and kept their eyes riveted on the forest. His lordship appeared unconcerned. Yet from time to time he would turn and cast a menacing look at Mariana, undoubtedly ready to kill his niece at the first sign of an attack. Fortunately, Yanez, aware of the old man's sinister intentions, had not let him out of his sight, ready to rush to protect the young woman at the first sign of trouble. They had travelled about two kilometres away, always advancing in the deepest silence, when a whistle sounded from the bushes on the right side of the path. Yanez, who had been expecting the attack at any moment, unseathed his sword and placed himself between his lordship and Lady Mariana. "'What are you doing?' asked Lord James, promptly turning about. "'Didn't you hear that?' asked Yanez. "'A whistle?' "'Yes. What of it?' "'Means my friends now surround us,' Yanez said coldly. "'Bah! Traitor!' yelled his lordship, drawing his sword and heading towards the Portuguese. "'Too late, sir!' yelled Yanez, moving to shield Mariana. Two lethal discharges thundered from both sides of the path, sending four men and seven horses to the ground. Then thirty men, thirty tigers of Montpressem, rushed out of the bushes, filling the air with indescribable cries as they charged towards the troops. Soldiers had gathered behind the horses. Sandokan, at the head of his men, rushed into their midst, and with a single blow felled the first man that appeared before him. His lordship growled angrily, drawing a pistol with his left hand and a sword with his right, he advanced towards Mariana, who was clutching the mane of her horse. Yanez quickly jumped to the ground, pulled the young woman out of her saddle, and holding her against his chest with his strong arms, attempted to move away from the fight. A difficult task, for the natives were defending themselves with furious desperation. "'Make way! Make way!' he yelled, his voice thundering over the din of musketry and the ferocious class of metal. Unfortunately, no one was paying much attention to him, except, of course, for his lordship, who was cocking his pistol. Yanez, already at a disadvantage, was plagued by one last piece of bad luck. 
The young woman fainted in his arms. He set her down behind one of the fallen horses, just as his lordship, pale with rage, fired at him. He ducked to the right and avoided the bullet, then unseated his sword and yelled, To us, old man, I'll give you a taste of my steel. Traitor, I'll kill you, replied his lordship. They rushed at each other, Yanez determined to sacrifice his life to protect the young woman, his lordship ready to do anything to deny her to the tiger of Malaysia. While the two were exchanging blows, the pirates and the British fought with equal fury, both sides trying to gain the advantage. Lord James's escort reduced to a handful of men, but well entrenched behind the bodies of fallen horses, defended themselves courageously, the natives matching blow for blow, countering the tiger's howls with savage battle cries. They fought mercilessly, and when they ran out of bullets they grabbed their rifles by the barrel and used them as clubs. They retreated, they advanced, all the while refusing to yield. Sanokan, sword in hand, tried in vain to smash through that human barrier and rush to aid the Portuguese who was working hard to fend off the old man's tumultuous attack. He roared like an animal, splitting heads and stabbing chests. He rushed at the enemy's bayonets, dragging his men forward, their bloodied weapons and heavy swords flailing before them. The British resistance could not last long. The tiger dragged his men on the attack once more and finally broke through their defences, the soldiers scattering in all directions. Hold on, Yanez, thundered Sandokan, furiously battling a soldier that attempted to block his path. Hold on, I'm almost there. A vigorous blow broke the Portuguese sword in half. He was now unarmed, defending an unconscious woman, with Lord James standing just paces before him. Help, Sandokan, he yelled. His lordship lunged at him, howling triumphantly. But Yanez did not give in. He jumped nimbly to one side, avoided the thrust, and in a last desperate move, smashed his head into the lordship's skull. Both men fell, recovered immediately, and attacked, attempting to strangle one another as they rolled among the dead and wounded. John, said his lordship, seeing a soldier fall a few feet from him, his face gashed by a hatchet. Kill Lady Mariana, that's an order. Gathering his last remaining strength, the soldier rose to his knees, drew his dagger, and moved to obey. He did not have the time. Outnumbered, the British fell one by one to pirate steel. The tiger was only two feet away. With irresistible force, he knocked the men before him to the ground, attacked the soldier advancing on Mariana, and killed him with the swipe of his sword. At last, exclaimed the t pirate, picking up the young woman and clutching her to his chest. He leaped from the fray and escaped into the nearby forest while his men dispatched the last remaining soldier. His lordship, alone and exhausted, propping himself up against a tree close to where Yanez had thrown him, could only look on helplessly at the bodies strewn about the path. 